Hello, I am Jason, better known as Jay the Ninja, and today I will be talking about some tips and tricks to making a metal grate floor, like the one in this example image here. What's really great about a floor like this is it's a good way to add some texture and visual interest to a floor, which is ordinarily, you know, your big boring part of the render. You know, in our finished project, we probably have some cool machinery and sci-fi gadgetry on our walls, maybe some pipes on the ceiling, but what do we put on the floor? It's, it's the floor. People have to walk there, so it's not like you can cover it in junk unless you're making an abandoned spaceship. So, if you need a good, clean, industrial or sci-fi look, the metal floor is a great way to go. The problem with this is, it's kind of a lot of polygons. In fact, the example render I'm pulling up here is about 7 million faces. So, how do we do that without burning your entire polygon budget on the floor? In front of me here is the room we're going to be making the floor for. To make life simple, I've made it 10 meters by 20 meters. You can see that in the dimensions tab here. Let's go ahead and make a floor tile. Go ahead and add a cube. And now the cube primitive by default is 2 meters by 2 meters. Radius, it describes it as a radius as though it was a circle, would be 1 meter. So double that is 2 by 2. You get the idea. So we're going to go ahead and drop this to 50 centimeters so we get a nice 1 meter by 1 meter cube. Go ahead and translate it up by 0.5. So it's flat on the floor there. We're going to drop into edit mode. Kind of select the top. Bring it down. It's about the height we want our floor tile to be. And then we're going to drop into wireframe here. Select the top and bottom faces. Hit I to inset. Go ahead and uh, s disable select outer there because we want to grab these two interfaces. So what we're trying to build here is just the border to our tile. and give that a little bit of a scale up. And then we can go ahead and delete those faces. We're not going to need them because we want this hollow. So to just complete filling it in, we'll select the uh, two border edge loops there. Hit Control E to bring up our edge tools menu. And so we're going to select bridge. And there we go. A nice, solid one meter by one meter frame. So I'll go ahead and drop out edit mode on that. Fix the origin point. Call it, I don't know, floor tile border. Copy that name over to the mesh data too. The next thing we're going to need to do is get a grate that actually fills in the floor. You know, the actual important part of our floor. To do that, we're going to need to use a little add-on called Extra Objects, which adds a ton of extra little primitives to the Add Mesh menu. If you've never used it before, it lives... That was embarrassing. It lives over here in the Add Mesh section. You just click here, make sure it's enabled. And once you do that, if you go to Mesh, you'll have an Extra Objects plugin here, which has a whole bunch of things. You've got gears, gemstones, math surfaces, regular polygons, the twisted torus, which is always fun, but under miscellaneous objects is what we're after. We want honeycomb. And honeycomb gives us a set of hexagons that we can build up into pretty much any shape we want. We want a much smaller grate than this, so we're going to go ahead and drop down the cell diameter. Edge width is a bit too thin. Still a little bit too thin. Next, we're going to go ahead and build out the number. Hexagons tessellate conveniently easily. So we just need to ramp this up until it covers our grate. That looks about good there. So we'll go ahead and lift this up into position. And if we go over to the modifier list, we can go ahead and add a solidify modifier, which will give some thickness to our grate. And lift that up so it's fairly flush. Give our file a save. And there we have it. One floor tile. Now we need to copy this so it covers the entire space of the room. Now the simplest way to copy the tile is just to select our pieces, hit Shift D, and there we go. We have a second tile. The problem with this is it copies all the polygons individually. In fact, you can see we're already up to 30,000. We have two 1 meter by 1 meter floor tiles in our 10 by 20 meter room. We're going to need 200 tiles to cover this entire thing. 
What we can do instead is instance the floor tile. Now the simplest way that you'll often hear repeated to get an instance in Blender is to select your objects and just copy them using Alt-D. But the problem with this is it's not really an instance. It's technically two unique objects, as you can see here, that happen to be sharing a mesh. In some cases, these will export as instances. In other cases, they won't. And so what we can do instead is use the Dupli system. And it comes with a couple of different modes. What we're going to be using here is the face duplication. And so to pull that off, we're going to go ahead and add a new mesh, a little plane. We're going to go ahead and expand this plane so it's the size of our room, 10 by 20, twice as big as we need to be. So we'll go ahead and scale by 0.5. And the next thing we want to do is we want to cut this into a grid that matches the grid of our floor tiles. So that means 10 sections widthwise, 20 sections lengthwise. To do that, we can use the edge loop tool. And you'll notice with the edge loop tool, if we do one cut, we get two sections, two cuts, three sections, etc. So if we want 20 sections, we'll just kind of scroll up until we see 19 down here. Oops. I didn't confirm that. And we're going to do the same thing with Wise with nine cuts so we get 10 face sections. There we go. So what we have now created is a small floor plane that is divided up exactly the way we want our floor tiles to be divided up. Now, to activate the duplication. We have a couple different objects down here. We are in the objects tab for our plane, which we'll probably go ahead and give a cool name like floor tile launcher. Much cooler. <clears throat> and we're going to go ahead and enable duplication as faces. Now, right now it didn't do anything because we didn't give it anything to duplicate. The way dupli faces work is they use any geometry that's parented to the launcher object. Select a floor tile, hit control P. Set parent to object, and there we go. Blender has built out our floor. You can see that each face on our original has had a little tile instance right over the top of it. And these will always export as instances, no matter what we do. So another good advantage of using Dupla faces is this is live. If we wanted to add another piece to this, we could just make it here on the original and also parent it to the launcher, and it would automatically push out do all of our other planes. In fact, if we just take our little border object here, and add, say, bevel modifier, you can see it updates to all of our other floor tiles. And just the width on that. And I'm just realizing having wire on for the launcher is probably not doing my viewport any favors. It's a little bit faster. So speaking of the viewport speed, there is one other thing we can do to improve that. Adjust the maximum draw type and just quietly switch it to bounding boxes. At this point, this is our floor. We look in the viewport, you just get all of this. Just nice little boxes and our original here that we can edit. And when we go to render this, you're not going to see the plane that we're duplicating off of, and you're not going to see the original here. You are just going to see the floor. Drop back to our camera, hit render. Our render's wrapped up. You can see 27 seconds and only 3 megabytes of RAM for 2 million polygons worth of metal grade floor. In fact, just as a test, we can go ahead and render again without the floor, just by turning off render visibility on the launcher object there. Not bad. 2162 and about a few hundred kilobytes of RAM versus 3 megabytes and 27 seconds. So it took about 8 seconds of render time and 3 megs of RAM for all this wonderful floor detail.
And if we can just jump back to the viewport, you can see things are still would be performing pretty well if I didn't have my screen recorder on. Trust me on this, it's, it's fast. You will not have any navigation problems with this at all. I wish my screen recorder was more efficient so I could show you how fast the viewport still is, but you need to take my word for it. But if you've been following along, you're probably happily orbiting your viewport, noticing, my, what a fast viewport I have. Indeed, your entire floor has nicely and efficiently been packed into one object and renders as beautiful instances. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and enjoy your very sexy sci-fi floors.